we've had yeah yeah we've had an intervention <laughs> no, from, from angry sound guy <laughs> Paul in the background. <laughs> Greetings movie fans, how's it going? My name is Owen Doherty. You're all very welcome to the big review ski with Omniplex Cinemas and my Omnipass. Now, if you take a quick look over there, it looks like it's Rory Cashin and Justine. But in a weird kind of magical plot twist this week, um, oh. that's kind of based on the plot of our big review, which is Jumanji, the next level. Nice. Rory and Justine have actually swapped bodies. So Justine, it's great to see you. Thank you. Hello, and Rory, it's great to see you. It's good to be here, Owen. I'm ready to tick X's and tick for good and bad jokes. And I'm ready to mention Nobber as, as much as possible. <laughs> as, we're going to put Nobber on the map. That's Fine. why we're here today. Uh, it's well overdue. So Justine and Rory, you make yourselves uh, comfortable. Thank you. I don't think we have to keep it up for the full show. No. We, like no. this, we get tricky for our big quiz, big yeah. question. When that's you, exactly what Rory would say. So that's good, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you would like to get in touch with the Big Review Ski, uh, you can tweet us at Big Review Ski. Uh, on Twitter, because that's where you tweet people. Again, Instagram, Facebook, all the usual uh, Joe social channels as well. Um, yep, that's everything. That's all of that. Sounds good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Done. We have to say a massive <laughs> thank you to so many people. Last week we held Quizmas, which was our big review oh, ski, yeah. big Christmas quiz. Um, Justine, <laughs> I'm mixing it up now. <laughs> Justine and Rory were both there. Yes. Yeah. Paul as well. We had a brilliant team down. Uh, so thank you to everybody who helped with that. But a special thank you to everybody who actually turned up and took part. Now, I do have a list of the quiz team names. Oh, Lord. oh yeah. they were beautiful. There were some, there were some quiz wonderful team names. Ones. Okay, so obviously with any Quizmas uh, themed quiz, we asked everybody to have a Christmas themed name as well. We sure so, did. There was a prize for best team name. Yeah. There was actually. So we had the Holiday Armadillos. Yeah, we like that. Friends, Friends reference. reference. Yeah. Sort of. Uh, Slay what? See, now, now we're going to have to go back one. To the first one. A movie quiz and they yeah. mentioned a TV Fre show. That, I know. That yeah. was my thing. But that's why they came in last yeah. place in the overall quiz. Yeah. And really last fair. place yeah. in the name part as well. Slay what I thought was really good. I like Slay what. I did not realise that was a name on, on the night. Yeah. I'm only hearing that now and I adore that. That's an amazing one. That's the, the, jing one the Jingle Bells. Absolutely. Just the Jingle Bells. I mean, I'm... It sounds, it sounds like a choir. Yeah. Okay. You know how I feel about choirs. Uh, it'd be Lonely This Christmas. Brackets no. quiz, which See, was, was Connor, uh, a guy called Connor turned up on his own. So that is lonely as well. Yeah. But then also had a friend. So it was less it lonely. It was fine. And we're all friends there as well. As well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we had <laughs> Philip Loves CrossFit at Christmas. Dislike. Not really getting I'm dislike. not a big fan of that. Stop mentioning Anyone who mentions CrossFit. No. <laughs> yeah. Rory's out. No. Uh, ho, ho, hoes and bitches. Relatable. Okay. I like that. Glitter girls. <sighs> also relatable. The Prosec hoes. Yeah, Super like I was on board like with that. that. They actually won best quiz team yeah. name, so congratulations. Quizmas Prats, which is just mm. um, ho 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 dot ie. See sort, what they did yeah, there. Trying to suck up. Yeah. Don't try too hard. Yeah, no. um, <laughs> Santa's Little Helpers, uh, the Wet Bandits, like that. Yeah. And I thought this was the cleverest one, Mr. Hanky. Yes. The Christmas Poo. The Christmas Poo. But again, well, TV that reference. was a Christmas <gasps> movie, right? Wasn't yeah, there was there was a the movie song? as well. So there was a counts. movie, but he wasn't in it. Yeah. So okay. So as I'm we said, um, um, we'll we'll see you next Christmas again, hopefully for the next Christmas movie quiz, because that was was such a success. And thanks to everybody at Omniplex and Rath Mines as well who were there taking part and helping out as well. It was the perfect way to kick off the yeah. festive filmy season. Now, though, that's enough of that. It's time for the big question on the Big Review Ski. And for last week's big question, we wanted to know what is your favourite movie starring Colin Meany? Mm. Mm -hmm. So, Justine, you went for the snapper? I did. Rory. Every week. Layer cake. You did. I got it. You I did. got it. You did. Ah, yeah. Paul went for the van. He did. Yeah. And I went for Under Siege. Full as well. Stop. Yeah. As well. <laughs> uh, so, John got in touch. Man after your own heart, Rory. Layer cake as well. Good man, John. Catherine, mm. do you really need to ask? Yes, Catherine. Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah, it's a question. It's, 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 called, called it's literally question. called the big question, yeah. Catherine. Yeah. It's a question mark. Are you end. paying attention? Uh, she went for the snapper. Thank you. Uh, Julie went for the van. Kel, did no one on it. Love the snapper, but it's intermission for me. Ah. Yeah, twisty turnaround. Amy went for the commitments. And then Linda went for a very threatening gif of Colin <laughs> and a pair of Jordan shears. Yes. Jordan. Well. 
funny. Yeah, I George appreciate gorgeous. that. Obviously, from the snap. I went as well. home and watched the van literally yesterday, just to be like to remind myself of oh, why did Paul Beckett? I'm like, it was good. It's, it's so a nappy. Good. Yeah, it's the funniest bit of the whole film. Yeah, but it's still it's still, still not up there not the for snapper. you with the snapper. Yeah. It's okay. also no wonder Siege. <laughs> Two. Um, so that was last week's big question, and kind of inspired by the release of Jumanji sequel this week. Uh, and it's a similar kind of question. It's basically, what's your favourite movie starring the one, the only, Mr. Danny DeVito? Who? Huh. Um, so, oh, that, that'll look. That'll look oh, weird. I'll just yeah. put that away. Yeah. Sorry about making a mess. I thought it would work better. Um, yeah, what's your favourite movie starring Danny DeVito? Um, I'm actually <laughs> devastated that Paul isn't here this yes. week because he is... In love. Yeah. Like, actually would do anything. He would die for that man. Absolutely. Um, Maybe Danny, that's why he's not Danny here. Danny Divito. <laughs> Danny, da Danny Divito. That's it. Um, well, that's I was it. thinking, because we're all fans, we were like the Danny Devotees. All right. Danny De Devotees. Yep, yep, yep. It's yeah. in there somewhere. I'm on board. Um, obviously, loads of people know him now from Frank Reynolds, uh, from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Absolutely incredible in that. But he's got this unbelievable TV and movie career where he acted, wrote, directed, produced, everything um, from the 70s onwards, um, kicking off like, what was it, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, mm -hmm. uh, started off in Taxi and stuff as well. So basically, it was, he's unbelievable. Um, yeah. And the brilliant thing about Jumanji, which we'll get to the next level, is that himself and The Rock do a body swap or something along those lines or elements of that. Yeah, he, I mean, he's the in The Rock's body. Okie dokie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hey, I've been, oh. Yeah, yeah, no, there, <laughs> and there it is. Um, so what I went for, uh, kind of a double... Don't. I had a double you. answer. I had a double answer, and uh, I was so sure of which one I was going to go for. Double DeVito? And then double mm. DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> I went for 1996. It's an adaptation of like, an absolutely... <laughs> like, <what laughs> <the> <laughs> um, adaptation of uh, a brilliant book by Roald Dahl. It's Matilda. And he actually... Uh, he directed it as he well. Did, yeah. And it's so brilliant because it's kind of from Matilda's kind of take on the world as well. And because Danny DeVito was so short, has, I've, I've a theory like that his direction in this has all these kind of these weird angles that constantly look up, mm. but it works really well with the oddness of the movie. So Matilda, uh, in case anyone hasn't read the book or seen the movie, uh, played by Mara Wilson, who had an absolutely stellar run like during the oh. 90s of Mrs. Doubtfire, um, Miracle on 34th Street and Matilda as well. And but then that was it. <laughs> and then that was yeah. it. But you'd be happy with those three. Yeah. Um, yeah. So really precocious young girl. She's a genius, loves reading, and then discovers that she actually has these kind of... Yeah, it's uh, just not Carrie. Yeah, it's Carrie, basically, but yeah. for younger kids. All right. And me, because I'm scared yeah. of Carrie. Yeah, um, yeah. I'd be the exact same. This is nice to know that it's a horror film that I'll never watch. <laughs> yeah, That's exactly. It's, exact, it's pretty much the exact same plot. Really? Except uh, this one has a bit more cake. Oh, so much cake in this. So but there is, uh, like with Danny DeVito on board and he adapted it and was involved in obviously making it and then directing it, he um, he just captures the world, the kind of just the offbeat kind of world of Roald Dahl where things are, it seems kind of normal and then just these weird things happen as well. Um, so the moment that I chose is whenever he's working in his, because he's obviously, he plays Matilda's daddy, Harry Wormwood, really dodgy, horrible man. Uh, just really nasty. They're all just, they just treat her really badly and she, you know, thinks about getting her revenge on them. But carries out. Uh, yeah, in this uh, particular scene, it's a really famous one where she's suggesting that he shouldn't be as illegal as he's being. And he's basically, I'm big, you're small, blah, blah. And it's just, it's a brilliant little speech. So this is Danny DeVito as Harry Wormwood in Matilda. Daddy, you're a crook. What? This is illegal. Yeah, keep drilling. Do you make money? Do you have a job? No, but don't people need good cars? Can't you sell good cars, Dad? Listen, you little wiseacre. I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. And there's nothing you can do about it. Phew. Just after that scene, there's an amazing wee bit where they go to the restaurant. You can actually, if you're watching and not listening, you can see it up on the screen there, but... Again, the direction, you forget how talented Danny DeVito is at doing that kind of stuff as well. It's brilliant the way this entire scene plays out. 
a waiter drops loads of cake, goes flying up in the air, and just a perfect slice lands in front of Matilda, and the fork just goes boing, and she oh, just eats it, so... and oh, it's just, it's beautifully done. So, that was my shout. Justine, what did you go for? Well, it's... <laughs> About to be re-seen again. Uh, what? Carrie. Uh, before it was a horror film. Carrie Light. Uh, yeah, I went for Matilda. Did you actually? I did, I did. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Rory, can't wait to get to your answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the reason why is just that this was such an iconic film for me as a kid. And don't you for a second oh, tell me. Oh, <laughs> You really are channeling Rory today. <laughs> Don't you tell me that after seeing this film that you didn't sit there and stare at a bottle and try mm, and make a movie. Mm -hmm. We've all tried to do it. Or I started convince smaller, ourselves. just pencils and things like that. Yeah, because yeah. you think that's lighter, that'll work. Yeah. Or a, a light switch, you're like, <laughs> yeah, I got this. But uh, that's what that inspired in me. And it's always a fan that I love going back and watching time and time again. And it's just... Seeing him, seeing where he's gone to from here. Like This was the first film I'd probably ever seen him in. And it's just an incredible career he's had. And I love that he's essentially playing a Calvin man stereotype in a film. Yeah. Because he's just well, being... Well, I mean, for legal reasons, I didn't just agree with what yeah, you said. The stereotype. But I would like you to explain it. <laughs> well, like living Calvin. on the border, you know, you just that, that, there's that stereotype. And it's very, very Yeah, I'm right here. How are you doing? Not... <laughs> What's the crack? <laughs> it's, it's just that, that old stereotype that isn't really true, I'll be honest. But that's what he's portraying in this film of being just a con man and trying to cheapskate people out of learning the tricks of the trade of getting away with. Hang on, is this your clip? Uh, no, but I've cl <laughs> a clip. I was like, have you picked the exact same clip from the exact same film? I've picked the clip right before this clip, essentially, of like him in the garage showing them other things that they can... Ah, yeah. right. Well, let's take a look to, at yeah. Danny DeVito again as Harry Wormwood <laughs> again. And he's also the narrator. He is yeah, uh, as well. Film. So you get that nice kind of Frank Reynolds yeah. kind of gruff uh, kind of chatting the whole way through. So hopefully this is a different part of the same movie. Here we go, <laughs> Matilda. We really should weld these bumpers on, but that takes time, equipment, money. So we use super, super glue instead. Go ahead. Put it on there. Would it fall off? Definitely. Isn't that dangerous? Not to me, okay? Transmission. The sawdust quiets the gears and lets the engine run as sweet as a nut for a couple of miles. <laughs> Daddy, that's cheating. Of course it's cheating. Nobody ever got rich being honest. 20 years ago, we could turn the numbers back by hand. It's a double whammy for Matilda this week. Is it yeah. going to be three for three, Roy? No. Oh, okay. No, oh, um, I didn't pick... Point. What I wanted to pick because I think I only picked it last week. So I was thinking you were definitely going to yeah. go for Batman Returns because we were singing his praises last week anyway as his mm. performance mm. of the Penguin in mm -hmm. that. Uh, yeah, I think that's my second favorite da okay. film that Danny DeVito was in. Oh, here we go. Okay. See, because we had the same thing for Colomini. Uh I went for Get Shorty. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, which is the one of the two films that I guess restarted Travolta's career in the mid nineties. Uh, it's Barry Sonnenfeld, it's, uh, the cast of this is insane, Gene Hackman, Rene Russo, Danny DeVito. DeVito is basically like the best Oscar, like multi-Oscar winning actor in Hollywood. Uh, and Travolta's trying to pitch him uh, a script that he hasn't written because he's actually living it in the movie that we're watching. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's, it's so funny, it's, it's super dark, it's very violent, it's very Tarantino-y without being... Smug about it? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just fantastic. And this is the scene where Travolta is trying to get DeVito to act the way Travolta does in the movie. And he can't quite channel the threatening <laughs> uh, <laughs> the threatening atmosphere. Um, and, and Travolta just keeps coming back. He's like, you're tired? You're sleepy? <laughs> you're, you're hungry? You want to lie down? Uh, but it's, uh, it's a fantastic scene. Okay. This is Danny DeVito in Get Shorty. What? What I'm thinking is, you're mine, I own you. But what I'm not doing is feeling one way or another about it. You see, you're not a person to me. You're an entry in my book, that's all. You're just a guy who owes me money. All right, how about this? Ooh, oh, wow. Oh. Not bad, mm. not bad. Mm. No wonder you're Martin Weir. Oh yeah. <laughs> is Get Shorty the one where he plays a really famous actor and like he's dressed up in, is it, 
like Napoleon kind of get up and he's on billboards that, or yeah yeah okay. yeah that's that's the the, the film that he's within. just won an Oscar for right okay um, yeah it's it's really 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 funny the, okay. the script and everything is just stellar it's it's Elmore Leonard so he's, he's great can I can I just say my second one please because I think you'll really like it because I discovered something as I was reading up in it hang on I'm just gonna when we, when we have second one. what do you think I mean it's Christmas. No. It is. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, I actually fell for it. Oh, what a stupid person you are, Owen. Um, anyway, I went for 1997. It was Hercules. Oh, you where told he plays us Phil. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you just went ahead. He oh. plays Phil. Okay. Because um, whenever they were animating him, one really interesting thing about it, the chief animator for, you know, he plays the little yeah. half man, half goat thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the animator said that um, they'd never come across anybody who moved their mouth the way Danny DeVito did. So it led to, if you watch his character Phil in Hercules again, he had really different mouth shapes and they like tried to match all the animation to Danny DeVito. Then I wanted to find out what's the name of the creature he plays and it's a satyr, satyr, S-A-T-Y-R. I was like, what is that? It's a male nature spirit with ears and a tail resembling those of a horse as well as a permanent exaggerated erection. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, so that's what he plays in the Disney movie. Did anybody know that? Film. Well, I don't, that, I don't a, remember the permanent. Erection. I don't did remember the animation that in. Yeah, did they? So that's why I didn't choose it as my main answer. Fair. So, but I just I wanted you guys to know that anyway. Thank you. Wow, You're welcome. Gonna, Every week imagine. we'll be looking at one of our favorite trailers <laughs> from this week, and this week it's over <laughs> to Justine Stafford for the big trailer on the big review ski. Yeah, I'm. Um, <laughs> Still any, mention of, with, any mention of erections in your hair? Permanent, yeah. <laughs> exaggerated. Permanent, 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 that's just permanent, exaggerated. Painful. It's exhausting. <laughs> it's so knackered. Um, wow. But the fact it's exaggerated, like exaggerated the way it looks, <laughs> is he exaggerating? It's like, I'm telling you, it's this way. It's, it's like, but it's permanently there. I can see it. You know, I don't know what oh way it works. Oh my. I'm going to have to go back and watch Hercules again. Yeah. No. I no. really have to I know. I think that's room for me now. That. Ah, uh, it's not. It is, because the whole time I'm like, I don't know what this Maybe should be. Maybe that's where the song Go the Distance. I don't, I don't know. Like, Sadly, this Lord. week's trailer is not about a permanently exaggerated erection. Well, and okay. there's well, a sentence. What's the point in doing I it then? I never thought Spirit I'd say. Spirit of Christmas is over. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I picked the trailer from Pornhub this week. <laughs> <laughs> no, the trailer I have gone for is for Black Widow. Yes. So this nearly made the cut last week. Almost. Our, but then got that in when... Star Wars came along. No, it was Bond. No Bond. time oh, to sorry. die. sorry. Jesus Christ. Bond bump Black Widow. Headlines Bond. everywhere. Yes. And it was tough this week because we had Ghostbusters. Yeah. Wonder Woman 1984. Yes. Free Guy. That was, I was Ryan Reynolds, our husband. Again. Yes. A lot, a lot of... There was a lot of... Options. Black Widow deserves yes. attention. I mean, it's the origin story that a lot of people have been asking for. Um, and it's set between Civil War and Infinity War. And... It just, the trailer really got me that, I mean, Scar Johansson is stunning. I mean, I'm not sure how I feel about her ever since Rory met her. I just felt, mm. with Paul Rudd that Paul, time. Like, he's just ruined. <laughs> for anybody Rory meets, you're like, they're dead to me. Over. Well, yeah. not Ryan Reynolds, I'm still here for, you know. Fair. But, uh, yeah, this is the trailer. Okay, so this is, uh, it's about time that Natasha Romanoff, a.k.a. Yeah. Scarlett Johansson, has had her uh, own spin-off movie within the MCU. Uh, so this is coming out May 1st May 1st 2020 uh, she stars alongside the amazing Florence Pugh mm. as well um, and David Harbour and Rachel Weisz Rachel Weisz what a family mm. unbelievable uh, so this is a wee sneak peek at Black Widow I heard you had to leave in a hurry it's never easy these days so what are you going to do I've lived a lot of lives but I'm done running from my past I know you're out there. I know you know I'm out here. So we're gonna talk like grown-ups? Is that what we are? It's good to see you too, sis. What brings you home? So it looks like David Harbour is going to be bringing the token kind of comedy punchlines as well. 
You yeah, know? Mm. hopefully it's a step up from Hellboy. Oh, God. Oh, God, that was released this year and everyone's was, just blanked oh. it out of their minds. Probably the worst film I've seen this year. <laughs> oh, God. Up there. Right, okay. okay. <laughs> it sounded like a comedy to me, though, from your depiction of it by the end. I was like, I want to see this just for the laugh of how bad it is. It's, it's yeah, it's quite bad. <laughs> it's not, anyway. Uh, it's not good. <laughs> no. It's not good. It's not good. Definitely no. not good. Uh, I do like the start of this. It's very borny, especially her fight with her sister. Yes. Mm. Major love for Florence Pugh. She's 100%. had a great year. So this year she was in Midsommar. Midsommar. Um, fighting with my family was of this course. year. Oh, yeah. So she's done action in this. Yes. Uh, comedy and obviously commitment to perfecting a, a yeah. wrestling role as well. And then horror. just absolutely wreck your head. Psychological horror as yeah, well. So she can. Oh, and she's in Little Women. A Little Women as well. Yeah. So she's just, right. She's okay. having a, a What do you want me to do? Grant, no mm. bother. Yeah, yeah, I, little I can little Meryl Streep here, just capable of anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and the action scenes at the, at the start, I like them. And then when it goes to CGI, I'm a bit like, mm. Mm, no. Okay, okay. But I am hopeful. Yeah, that's all we can do is hope. Yeah. It's the hope that kills you. God. It can't be as bad as Hellboy. Surely it can't. That's all I'm There's saying. The That's the positive. level of positivity There's I'm hope. looking for. Hellboy yeah. oh, yeah. oh, way down there. <laughs> <laughs> we're just slightly yeah. above that. No, so Black Widow, um, we're looking forward to that. 1st of May, 2020. 2020. Stay tuned. Yeah. We might have Scarlett Johansson, David Harbour, Rachel Weisz in the show. My good friend Scarjo, back again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just friend, not a fan. I know. I'm just not a fan. Would you like to talk to Rachel Weisz? Sure. David Harbour? Yeah, I think I have some questions for him. <laughs> I've got some questions for you, Harbour. Was... <laughs> Where's the body, David? <laughs> yeah. um, so, no, I'm looking forward to it. Like, massive MCU fan anyway. So, and of course, we'll give it every, give all the movies a chance. Mm-hmm. So we'll see, we'll see what the crack is with that. Um, now, last week we had a review of Motherless Brooklyn. We did. Who is, uh, who is a film? <laughs> uh, directed by Charades. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, directed by Ed Norton, who also stars in it as well. Set during nineteen fifties well, New York, mostly remembered. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, set in New York, and it was shot by uh, the wonderfully talented Mr. Dick Pope. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Who? What's some of the other movies on his CV? What's well, he's he been, been up to? He's been nominated, I think, for two Oscars. Uh, one was for The Illusionist, which was another Edward Norton movie. Mm-hmm. Um, the one that people for confused with Mix the prestige. Mix up with the prestige, yeah. And then uh, Mr. Turner, which was the Mike Lee one. With it? Timothy Spall. With Timothy Spall, mm-hmm. about the famous painter. Um, so yeah, he's he's known for his more like down and, not down and dirty, but like very realistic looking um, movies. So I think this is this is a different look for him to go like so... 50s New York, uh, very strong period piece aspect to it. Because you, you have a thing in your mind where you're like, this is what a mob movie looks like. Yeah. And when you see the trailer for this and the film, you're like, oh yeah, it's a mob movie. Got it. Um, and he does that. Uh, he does a lot of that work just with how the film uh, looks. <clears throat> but when I was talking to him, uh, I was like, when you're making films like this, and obviously New York looks very different today than how it must have looked in the 1950s. When you were growing up. <laughs> yeah, as a middle-aged man in the 1950s. Um, I've made myself laugh too much. <laughs> uh, you know, how, how easy is it to recreate a city that looks so different to how it did 70 years ago? Uh, and I was like, do you enjoy using CGI? Because I imagine someone old school uh, would maybe want to do as much physical in-camera stuff as they possibly could. And it turns out that Dick Pope is like a huge advocate for CGI because without it, the film would not have been uh, as epic in scale and scope as it is. That's what he had to say. Okay, listen. I got something wrong with me. That's the first thing to know. I got threads in my head. I got threads in my head, man. I twitch and shout a lot. If- Makes me look like a damn freak show. Can't you ever I'm cut so- that out? I'm sorry. Touch it, Bailey. I'm sorry. But inside my head's an even bigger mess. I can't stop twisting things around. Words and sounds especially. Have to keep playing with them until they come out right. Sorry. Jeez, forget I asked. Like I said, a damn mess. Well, I, here we go. That's a good question because I don't think the film could have been made without the without the um, you know the, the, the tools of CGI. It couldn't have been made. I mean, there's hundreds of CG shots in the film, 
but none of them work against the cinematography. They're all completely, um, you know, run in tandem with the look of the film. It, it, it was a, the, the guy who uh, was the VFX supervisor who did it, the VFX, I mean, he's a, I think he's a genius. Uh, his, his work on the film, it never rubbed. We, t- we talked endlessly, him and I. He was on the film the whole time. And he didn't just visit. He was there as a part of the project. And his input into into the film, um, talking to me, we, we just ran in tandem, really. We worked together. And I, I think the CG in the film is a triumph, really. I just don't see how we could have done it without. It wouldn't have had the scope or the epic quality of, like, big, big, big scenarios. Just streets, ch- chases, you know, the the fabric of old New York is, is obviously augmented by CG in the film. It had to be. It doesn't exist. So I think I don't think the film could have been made without the input of that. It would have been a very different, small affair, um, a very, very um, tight and not showing the expanse if, the, if it hadn't have been CG. That's actually really interesting, the way he's so open and so positive and pretty gushing about... I like, couldn't have done it without those other guys in the CGI yeah. department. Because um, as you said, normally it'd be like, well, we're the masters of our craft mm-hmm. and uh, we know how to get things done. We want to keep it as real and as authentic as possible. Mm-hmm. So no, um, very interesting man. If you can check out the rest of the interview with Dick Pope, uh, it's a b- 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 bonus feature of the Big Review Ski. Uh, so you can listen to that up online as well. But one of the funniest things, and again, anybody who's been uh, like listening or watching the show uh, this year or last year, you know, we get to know everybody's like personalities and styles and everything as well. But one of the things that I love about I am l- you, terrified, <laughs> <laughs> listening back to the interview, if you listen again, it's so funny because Dick Pope, whatever way he answers questions, he takes like, he pauses for a second and it's the perfect amount of time where you think you're going to ask another question and then he just interrupts again <laughs> and again. So I could just picture you asking and you were like, okay, okay, yeah. And then he kind of finishes his answer and then you go to, and then, and he's like, and another <laughs> thing about that, and you're like, okay. So I really enjoyed the interview, both his answers and both listening to you going, I am going to kill you, Dick Pope. Let okay. me talk. Yeah, yeah. I remember because I think I did the interview in this room yeah. over the phone and uh, Paul, who's working on sound, there was a few times where I think I was just looking at the camera. I don't know if it was even on, but I was it like, wasn't on. is he talking? <laughs> is Am he I talking? Who's talking? Uh, talking right? But no, he was, a, he was a lovely man. And it's uh, that's one of the downsides of doing it over the phone. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> as I said, you can go and check out that full uh, interview. And as well, Motherless Brooklyn is in Omniplex Cinemas right now. And now it's time for this week's big review. It is. Which is Jumanji, the next level, the sequel to the incredibly enjoyable uh, Jumanji from a couple of years ago. 2017. Was it called Welcome to the Jungle? No, it that was. Was it actually? It was, yeah. Even though not that's to be the name confused of another. With the other rock movie, yeah, Welcome well, to the Jungle, Jungle yeah. which was actually called The Rundown. Exactly. And not to be confused with the other Jumanji film, which was just called Jumanji as well. Yes. Not to be confused with the song by ACDC. Jumanji. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Love that tune. Yes. So in the first one from 2017, which was actually the second one, we had yes. The Rock, yes. uh, Jack Black, Kevin Hart, and Karen Gillan. Mm-hmm. Uh, a really fantastic foursome together. Like their chemistry was just brilliant throughout. Really nice premise where they had all the, uh, when they were dropped into the game, four kids taking the form of these guys, and they had the, their kind of their strengths and their weaknesses was a really brilliant way to kind of introduce just loads of funny visual uh, gags. Um, so obviously they're back. The first one did brilliantly well. Really enjoyed by audiences. Made a fortune. It was surprisingly really good. Yeah, it was actually because really I was. Funny. Uh, and then when I said it was like this was class, I yeah. enjoyed that a lot. So uh, the sequel was a no brainer. Uh, so now they're back. But I think whenever the first trailer uh, dropped for this, everyone was like, "Oh God, Danny DeVito and Danny Glover are going to be amazing in this because it seems to be." The Rock is trying to act like Danny DeVito. Mm-hmm. So I'd pay good money. Good money to see that. Um, so what's the movie about? Uh, it's set a few years after the first one and the the best friends from the younger group from the first one have kind of splintered a bit and they live in their own lives. Uh, and the, I can't remember his name, but the, the, the lead lad from the first one, 
he's feeling a bit lonely, so he goes back home for Christmas uh, and ends up going into the Jumanji game on his own. And then his other three friends are like, we can't let him go in on his own. So they go in as well, uh, except they do it while at home with Danny DeVito, who is his grandfather, and Danny Glover, who is Danny DeVito's no longer best friend, for reasons Ooh, you'll find out over the course right, of the Right, okay. Got a they, bit of conflict. And they're all dragged in, and instead of them being the characters that they were the first time, The Rock is now Danny DeVito, Kevin Hart is Danny Glover, uh, and the other two have swapped around as well. So, uh, so yeah. Oh, and the, the Jumanji game broke in the first one, so it's the guy has kind of put it back together, but it's it's a little bit... It's got a weasel. Mm, glitch. It's got a bit of a glitch going on. Okay, okay. Uh, so, that's the plus. Okay, well, let's take a wee sneak peek at it now uh, before we get the full review of Jumanji, the next level. This next adventure is even more challenging. This time, not all of you will leave the game alive. Bethany thought you might need some help. Where is Bethany? She's right here. She says, oh my God, like I'm a total horse. Yep, that's Bethany. Hey. A terrible drive. What are you talking about? I just passed my driver's test last month again. What happened? Yes, I'm back. I missed you so much. Oh my God, you guys, hi. Bethany? You guys, we're back in Jumanji. Now, just as that uh, <laughs> good clip was playing, uh, we've had, yeah, yeah, we've had an intervention no, from, from angry sound guy, <laughs> Paul, in the background. He's shouting the words guns and roses. No, I've been just shouting saying, can you, can you it internally. Yourself, yeah, I can. I've been shouting it internally for the whole trailer and ever since yeah. the words ACDC came out of my mouth. I've you weren't even like, listening to Rory. I can't. I actually wasn't. If you go back to that clip, it's just Welcome me saying, my world. it's Guns N' Roses, you actual <laughs> silly bully. Uh, I want to apologise to Guns N' Roses and ACDC and Jumanji. Um, <laughs> to everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the music. jungle. <laughs> Welcome to the big apology with Welcome Justin Stafford. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think uh, apology accepted from everybody. Thank it's, you. Again, it's Christmas it's, time. It's very forgiving. It's all good. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the season. No, I'm a bit upset with myself now, to be honest. Oh, uh, no, yeah, don't be upset. Yeah, I'm embarrassed. It's not. It's something I'd... It's a song And I'd, listen, that's important. Yeah. But Rory, what did you think of the movie? <laughs> <laughs> go on, go so, on with the review. I mean, like... Emotions and all that. Yeah, so it's true. Really yeah, 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 we've got, <laughs> we've got a show to do. Uh, it's 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 okay. For God's sake, Roy. I know it's only okay. I think because the the first second one um, yes. <laughs> was such a surprise uh, that we came into this and we were like, "Ooh, high expectations," and it, it doesn't match the first one mm. uh, at all. Um, and a lot of the time, it feels like a rethread. Just a Aretha lot of Franklin, the famous singer. I knew we couldn't get through the show. No, whatever, could we? it Sweet. was happy days. Boom. <sighs> the shame. It's just the two of you should be ashamed. Oh, I am. We well, we're not we dealing with we're that. Not that. Not no, no. Yeah, we're battling that. <laughs> Push it down. Push it um, down. Yeah, like Kevin Hart as Danny Glover is hilarious. <laughs> Like every single line that comes out of his mouth is is a highlight of the movie. That Danny DeVito, early when he is Danny DeVito, is really enjoyable. Of the course. Rock is Danny DeVito, not so much. What? Not as that's the he, thing I'm most excited I about was as well. Uh, but like, it, it, I think for over the course of the film, he's one joke that he keeps repeating, and the joke is, I didn't quite hear what you said. Okay. Instead, he just goes, "Huh." Like 40 or 50 times. <laughs> that was funny. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Yeah, that's pretty funny. I mean, that was a very good Danny DeVito impression. Uh, and Karen Gillan's good. Uh, Always. Jack Black is decent. Aquafina is a new addition as well. She's she's really, really funny. Um, Joe Jonas? One of the Jonas. One of the Jonai is one back. The, yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, he's he's fine. It just, it's just very the same as the first one, which is disappointing. I know, but it's still not it a... should have just... You know, just, just give us something. Mm. Just change it a little bit. But people are definitely going to really enjoy this one if they are going in and getting exactly what was served up first it's time around. It's not bad. It just yeah. feels reheated. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, okay. it's fine. All right, so Jumanji, uh, the next level, out in cinemas this week. Yes. 
So go check it out. It's and really, it's set at Christmas, technically, so... I was going to say, so he goes home for Christmas because mm. he's feeling lonely, so that's how they get away with the Christmas release date as well. Yeah. But that's not a film I classify as a Christmas film. No, because we had this discussion. Yes. Yeah. set at Christmas? Mm -mm. No. Is no. it about Christmas? No. So, no. Watch Love Actually again last night. <gasps> again? See, anyway, yeah. <laughs> not like... I didn't watch it earlier yesterday, yesterday as well. Like, I, well, just, you're, you're, I mean, before you're, in my life, previously. I watched it again last night. No, like, but I just, like, because people are so divided about that. And you get people who love it and people who absolutely hate it. And there's loads of See, cracking I, jokes in it. I put it up on, on the joke. Yeah. And I, I left the vote open to the people. It's like, if you love it, if you yeah. hate it. And it was overwhelming love. Yeah, of yeah. course. It's amazing. Overwhelming love, actually. There you go. There it is. There you go. So beautiful. Is that another one? It just... No, no my it's, hollow. It's just, yeah. I'm gonna run out of ink at this point. We're gonna keep moving <laughs> on now. All right. So Are you now, shame? <laughs> subsided. It's pushed down. Yeah. Good. I've, Good. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So, <laughs> I, don't wanna, I don't want to hear about it. So. It's, it's competition time on the Big Review Ski, um, which of course means our weekly high clue. Uh, again, we had some high clues at Quizmas last week, so if you were there, you might have some clues to everything that's coming up. I say clues, it's the exact same high clues. It's, I didn't have not, time to Not only will yours. they have the clues, they'll have the answer. If they were paying attention, they may even have the answer. Yeah. So can we see last week's high clue first of all, please? So this was... Safe Cracking Scoundrel, Girls Festive Willy Fetish, mm -hmm. Nyx Pink Elephant. Uh, again, for anybody who's listening, Safe Cracking was hyphenated because that's grammatically correct. Safe Cracking Scoundrel, Girls Festive Willy what? Fetish, Girls is girl apostrophe S. Uh, Willy was capital W I L L I E. And then the final line, Nyx. Yeah. W I L. Oh, no. That's spelt wrong. We've had, we've had a spelling error in the high clue picture up on the on the screen. That's not my fault. I'm gonna go back and see if that's it. I have it written correctly here for what it's worth. <gasps> Willie, W I L L I E. I'm so sorry. I can't accept. <laughs> and the fault. final line. <laughs> I have to check everything. Nick's pink elephant. Okay. Anyway, that was last week's one. Uh, any ideas as to what it might have been? Yeah, we got it. We got it. I wrote down last oh, week. We got it last week. Bad Santa. The answer, of course, was <laughs> Bad Santa. <laughs> so I want to say congratulations to our winner, Cara McGann, who has a great inspirational uh, quote on her profile, which is a really powerful message. And I think one that really kind of resonates and hits home. Here we go. Especially at this time of year. Here we go. Deep down, <gasps> inside my shoe, oh. my sock is sliding off. Oh. Which is something. Is that a haiku? All, no, it's not. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, no, it's not. No. Uh, which is all pretty relatable as well. Beautiful. Yeah. Get new socks. Okay, so you'll take. For Christmas. We're taking the time but out not to. In the Chinese Angels pack that we have. We're dealing with Cara McGann's emotions, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but not Justine Stafford. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think not emotionally, your sock is slipping down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the solution, as we said, was bad Santa. Of course, the first line, safe cracking scoundrel, was uh, in reference to Billy Bob Thornton, who plays Bab Santa. Bab Santa? Hey, Bab. <laughs> Um, he cracks safe in it because right? he's a criminal, I'm fine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> he's a scoundrel because he's a bit of a nasty kind of bad guy in it. Yeah. Uh, and of course he starred in School for Scoundrels as well. Of course mm. he did. Uh, the middle line, Girls Festive Willy Fetish. Uh, Willy is his name in the movie Bad Santa. Spelled and differently. Mm. <laughs> spelled correctly. <laughs> uh, the girl in question is the bar lady that he meets who's got a, a bit of a fetish for uh, Daddy Christmas. So that's her festive fetish. Uh, and that's obviously Christmas him playing room. Santa, she makes her wear the Santa Christmas hat room. and all that stuff. I can't remember her name because she's from Gilmore Girls. That's why it's a reference to girl. It's not the just Gil any Gilmore girl. The Gilmore Mommy. She's the Gilmore Mommy. mommy. I'm oh. going to find out the, her name. Because the daughter, her name was Rory. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's her. your daddy's name? Gilmore. <laughs> okay, that makes perfect sense. Uh, so that was a uh, uh, reference to all of that. And then the final line, Nick's pink elephant, because the whole way through the film, Thurman Merman, the little boy who hangs around with Bad Santa, uh, wants a pink stuffed elephant. And at the end of the movie, uh, he gets in the pink elephant, brings it to the house, uh, and he nicks it, he steals it from uh, the department store as well. But he also, uh, Nick is like a little... Uh, a wee bit of a layer in there because it's Saint Nick because it's Christmas and it's Santa. Mm -hmm. So there you go, bad Santa. Happy enough with that? Mm -hmm. Except for the Apart yeah, it's from weird. the spelling mistake, I know. This week's high clue, oh God, I really hope it's this like is all spelled correctly. like a bit of karma correctly. there if I'm honest, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Can we take a look at the brand new one, please? Here we go. It's Bucks Band in a Van. 
Bugs fake fuzz to get even. Jerks crib hideaway. Bucks band in a van. Bugs fake fuzz to get even. Jerks crib hideaway. So for uh, all the apostrophes and stuff, it's Bucks, Buck apostrophe S, yes, band in a van. That's the first line. Uh, the middle line is just as is. Bugs fake fuzz to get even. And the final line, jerks. Crib hideaway, jerk is jerk, apostrophe is. Is it spelled correctly up on screen? Is it all okay? Seems fine. <sighs> okay, and syllables check out as well. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's, been trying to she's been trying to, to look get it. Spelling to was today. <sighs> no, don't be looking for oh, no, human spell it, check here. Yeah. This is the red line. Spell here. check and Wait, yeah. syllable count. Check okay, that, we're all good. Check that. Uh, so, the very best luck with uh, this week's hike. I meant to say, Carm again, you're way over there in that card. Uh, you've won yourself one of our Charities Angels uh, prize packs oh, yeah. as well, so congratulations on that. We'll get that sent out to you. Um, yes, and we'll have Omniplex tickets up for grabs for everybody who uh, goes into the draw for this week's High Clue as well. You've got it. You were at the quiz. You were at the quiz. You should know this answer as well. I was <laughs> not paying attention. having a merry old time <laughs> That's at the true. quiz. That's true. I was. Mould um, wine. I was doing my socially bits. Socially bits. Yeah. Egg uh, So... <laughs> Coming soon on the big review. See up next week. It's going to be. This is going to be our Christmas show next week. <gasps> it is. It is, of course. There's not. not it's quite weak. It's <laughs> so quite. Quiet. Quite weak next week. Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker is going to be released. Uh, we're also going to have cats is on there as well. Oh. Spies in disguise. Spies in disguise. The brand Will new Will Smith, Smith as film. a pigeon. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> and. <laughs> There's another one. <laughs> Little <laughs> Women. Little, Little Women. Women. Oscar favourite with Saoirse Ronan and Florence Pugh. Unbelievable. Florence Pugh again. Pew, she's pew. back again. Just, she's pew, pew, she's pew, back. Pew, it's pew, been pew, so pew, long, pew. Florence. Oh, lads. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you to Paul behind the scenes. Fiona as well. Ian as ever. Uh, Rory. Ian it's been wonderful. <laughs> wonderful thank to have you. you. Oh, Justine. Thank you. <laughs> Ashanti. Ashanti. <laughs> the lady. Uh, and I've been Owen Doherty. You've been wonderful. Please subscribe to the show. I thought you were Paul Moore this whole time. I was Paul Moore the whole time. I love Danny DeVito. No, it doesn't work. Yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> don't forget to subscribe to the show. Uh, if you like what you see, if you like what you hear, tell people, tell your friends. Give them the gift of the big review ski this Christmas. Yeah, Way cheaper. Them, get, just get send them, them the link. Subscription mm. Yeah, for 100%. Christmas. It's free. It costs nothing. You just break onto their computer and just hit subscribe. You don't need to give them a gift receipt or anything. like. Um, okay, listen. Thank you so much. We will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.